right. It's another day. It's another Your Daily Scrum. I'm professional scrum trainer Ryan Ripley. That gentleman in the small box is professional scrum trainer Todd Miller. Todd, what's up? What's up? How, how come mine is a small box? Well, both of them are, Todd. Okay. All right. You good? <laughs> yeah. I thought I'd start today with just a little bit of sarcasm. Okay. Fair fair play. Which I received from feedback from my son's teacher that she, he might be the most sarcastic 11-year-old that she's ever met. Shocking. <laughs> Anyways, we are professional scrum trainers with scrum.org, professional Kanban trainers. We do a bunch of stuff. Check out the description. It's all there along with our book and classes and other fun stuff. We get together each and every day to help you do scrum a little bit better. Today, though, we've got a different topic. Um, actually, I'm going to throw this topic up on the board. Let me just type it out here. Um, organize. See if I can type and talk, and I can't. I'm going to call today organizational change is a waste of time. <laughs> All right. So I got a little, I, so this is one of those where it was kind of like, I think it was a late night and I had my phone and I was reading a bunch of things about org change and I got frustrated and I posted on LinkedIn, just a very quick comment. Right. And so that comment is it's a waste of time to talk about uh, culture change in organizations. You can't directly change the culture. You can change incentives, measures, and rewards. Those changes might lead to a different culture. Um, and that led to some interesting discussion, right? And maybe I shouldn't say organizational change. I should say culture change. Mm -hmm. The waste of time. I don't think you can do it, right? So maybe that'll be the better culture change is a waste of time. I don't mm -hmm. think it's possible because regardless of what other changes you try to put in place, the incentives, the measures, and the rewards that people are judged against will always overwrite the poster on the wall, mm -hmm. right? Is that a fair premise, Todd, or have I lost my mind? I think it's a fair premise. I uh, so I'll say, um, could I could I add one? Could we yeah. add a comma and add one there? Because I maybe uh, goals. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. right? yeah. uh, I, I really believe that the way goals are structured and the way that measurements to those goals are structured really, really have an impact on behavior. Now, behavior may not have an impact on culture. Jeez, this is deep. Yeah. Right. Um, but but I, I think that those are those are really interesting from a behavioral perspective. Um, and, and and I start to think through, I, I think I just used the example today when we were talking, teaching a PAL E class about having worked for places before where uh, the the goal of the company was financial goal. And as a developer working and constantly hearing about our goal is to reach, you know, um, twenty million dollars this year. I didn't care. My car had 350,000 miles on it, right? What am I, what am I, what do I care about that much money? I, I don't, it's not going to, I'm going to get a cooler pen or, or they, I've been waiting for a new keyboard for six months. Where's that? Right. <laughs> so that's why I start to think about goals and the measurements associated with them and how maybe, maybe this is just a top in Todd's world about how, how much that's impacted my behavior in an organization. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think it's, you know, I've, I've had similar stories. I've been on the software side of a major product launch and I and I got to go to the party and I watched the sales guy get rewarded a, a, a Corvette, hmm, right. even though it was my team that built the product, mm -hmm. but they sold it. And I was like, well, these incentives are not quite aligned. And and mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's kind of mm -hmm. some weirdness, right? But I think the incentives, measures, goals, and rewards that we that we set in an organization ultimately determine behavior and behavior is the is the fuel for culture mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and yeah. so yeah. what what you measure what you incentivize what you reward that's what you're going to get yeah. and so these direct changes at, at culture change really are frustrating to me because as if we don't address uh the behavioral side and just put well this is our aspiration great but that's just on the wall Right. We really have to dig in as agilists and work with HR and finance and legal and compliance and leadership and do the incredibly messy work of, of unwinding uh, individual performance incentives and individual performance reviews. And we've really got to work through all of that messiness from a legal and local law and, and, and corporate uh, policy perspective. And that's hard and that takes time. 
It's mm-hmm. much more difficult than hanging up a poster or putting or putting four values on a wall, right? And if we don't dig in as agilists, as scrum masters who are working in the org, pop your scrum bubble, go work in the org. If we don't do that work, the culture's not going to change and your teams are not going to thrive. Yeah. Can I can I maybe say something that is could be very unpopular? Sure. Um, is that I think that in, like you were saying, incentives, measures, rewards, goals are very difficult things to change because they need to change the behaviors of the higher level executives in our organization. And it brings accountability there. Yep. Absolutely. And, and maybe, maybe people aren't accept, willing to accept that accountability from those positions because I've worked here for 20 years and now I'm an executive. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know that that's necessarily true everywhere, but I, I think that could be true. And so to your point though, why not work with those leaders to show them the way? Right. As, as Mando True. would say. Or to at least help them find a different way of thinking about yeah. it. Yeah. And right. if we can yeah. do that, we have a chance at success. A chance at changing the culture. Yeah. yeah. And there's no guarantee that changing any of these things actually move the needle. Yeah. It's inspect it's empirical process control. Mm-hmm. Right. And actually, this is something that EBM can help with in a lot yeah. of ways. Yeah. So maybe we'll talk about that in a future video. Let us know in the comments. Have we totally missed the boat here? Are you upset? If so, let us know why in the comments. Let us know where we went wrong. Uh, Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any follow-up videos. Check out the socials. You never know when I'm going to be up at 2 a.m. posting silliness. Um, Maybe. Maybe we can get Todd on Twitter, too. We'll see. I doubt it. I I tweet like 12 times a year. So Nice. Well, maybe you'll catch one of those 12 times if you follow the socials. (laughs) Videos are going to pop up. You don't want to miss those. The algorithm thinks... They're good for you. We do too. Uh, For Todd Miller, I'm Ryan Ripley. Go forward, do some good things. Check in on your goals, your incentives, your measures. See what those are pointing at and see if those are helping your teams. And if not, perhaps go uh, work with someone who can help affect positive change. Until then, we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. See you.